Good evening, welcome to Compline at Clarence this Thursday evening. It's good to have you with me tonight and I hope you've had a good day so far, a good week so far, almost up to Friday. Tonight I thought we would slow down by listening and following a story from the Old Testament. Uh, this is the story of Jacob and he has this interesting experience while out in the wilderness, all on his own in a place where Supposedly nothing happens out there in the wilderness. It's full of emptiness and open sky and open land. But something amazing happens to Jacob and it gives him a revelation of something about the reality of things. And I thought we might join him in the, in the wilderness tonight as we encounter God for ourselves this evening. So let's take this time to, to breathe, to slow down after a day. Maybe you've had a busy day, I don't know. But now's the time to put all that aside for a time being, for 20 minutes or so, just to stop and to breathe and to listen and to pray. So let's begin. Creator God, in whom we live and move and have our being, be close to us this night. Help us to open our hands that you might take from us the heavy burden of our anxieties and worries and fears. Set our minds at rest. Open us to the possibility of this moment spent with each other and with you. And shine your healing light into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And there above it stood the Lord. Jacob was an unpleasant character. His very name means something like the heel grabber or trickster. He was on his way away from home because he had stolen a blessing from his father, meant for his brother Esau. So now he's out in the wilderness alone and he decides to rest at a certain place since the sun had gone down and he takes a stone to be his pillow. And then suddenly in the empty wilderness there comes a heavenly vision and Jacob the trickster encounters God.
Where have you come from today? I'm sure your story is not like Jacob's on the run from his brother, away from home in disgrace. But on this dark night, as we take this time to stop together for a while, where have you come from? What things are heavy on your mind? Are there people and situations you'd like to bring before God? Now's your chance to do so. God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Holy God, three in one, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Visit this place tonight with your bright presence. Help us to see you. Help us to hear you. And as we prepare to sleep, may you meet us there too. Amen. God speaks to Jacob. I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. Peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. God makes some breathtaking promises to Jacob. In one sense, they're actually quite scandalous. Because this is Jacob, the trickster, the fraud, the cheater. And to this morally compromised man, God promises a future filled with blessing. God speaks to Jacob and offers him the chance for a better way of living. He's making a covenant, he's promising to be with him in that journey ahead. It's a great mystery that God always keeps his promises, even when we have not deserved his faithfulness. He loves us even when we are unlovely. He provides for us even when we are selfish and greedy. 
it took Jacob some years to finally get this about God. Jacob didn't change overnight. One dream. None of us do, do we? But perhaps tonight, in this moment, we might want to pause and wonder what promises is God making to us? And what things in our lives would God like us to leave behind? Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid, and he said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. Those words of Jacob have been very important for me in recent years. Like many people, I, I grew up with this image of God who is up there in heaven, which really meant he isn't on earth with me. But how could God ever be separate from his creation? Not a single blade of grass can grow without him sustaining it and bringing it into being. He is closer to us, Paul says, than we might even imagine. Which opens us to this startling possibility that even the place where we lay our head tonight is the house of God. And perhaps even more startling than that, that those people around me are also places where God can be revealed to me in the act of care towards me, in the kind word spoken to me, the encouraging word, the gentle rebuke. In all these things, God makes himself known to me. And in the world outside, as we watch the colours change, we can see echoes of God's presence, fingerprints of his creative work. Spend a few moments now thinking where God is tonight. If like me you were always taught that God is up there in heaven far away from us, maybe you might like to 
take Jacob's story as an invitation to question that way of thinking. What if God is closer than you might think? What if God is closer to you than your breath is to your lungs? Jacob takes some ordinary things, that stone and some oil, and he marks out the place where he had slept, because now it is a special place, and he gives it a new name. Something happened there, and he had to mark that moment somehow. Tonight, as we rest in God's presence, Think about how you might mark this moment. Something practical you can do. Maybe you could light a candle. Maybe you could draw something. Maybe you might take some time when we're finished tonight just sitting in silence, offering God those last minutes of your day. Don't let this moment slip into busyness again. Let's mark it out in some way. It's been really good to have you with me again tonight. And I hope you've enjoyed looking at this story of Jacob. I recommend you read it for yourself in Genesis chapter 28. I hope uh, tonight is a, is a time where you can find rest as we finish together. And that you, you truly do find a way to, to mark out this moment so that uh, the day just doesn't continue again, but that you can stop and be with God and recognize his presence with you wherever you are. Let's pray the words on the screen. If you want to pray with me, that'd be wonderful as we encourage one another with these words to God on our behalf. Lighten our darkness, Lord, we pray. And in your great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end.